Okay, Fight Fan. So today is a bittersweet day for me in the DMV, but after my little video last night, I said I would come back and do it right. Julian J. Rock Williams, man, he earned three belts last night by beating Jared Hurd, fighting strong on the inside, working his footwork, his jab, um, putting pressure on him that Jared Hurd's never seen before, and the gas tank never depleted. So it is a sad day for the DMV. It is a sad day for Maryland. Baltimore, it's just a sad day in Maryland, period. But J Rock, good win. Jared Hurd, holds your head, man. The rematch clause is a redemption. That's a fact, though. Fight fans, what up, man? It's your boy 3K the Boss, aka Mr. Two Hands Up. You know what it is, man. And this is, this is, this is uh, the Two Hands Show. And let's giddy, giddy go. All right, man. So first of all, man, I would just like to pay my respects to Julian J. Rock Williams, man, and the home of Philly because y'all got another unified champion, man. Congrats to him, man. Congrats to you, J. Rock. Last night I was so blown because me being a Maryland native, and if y'all been following this show, y'all always know I keep that Maryland flag to the back of me, man. And Jared Hurd living 20 minutes away from me and his um, corner man, who I got to see every month, and his family. Um, it just, you know, it, it was a very, very emotional loss for me because I know all of the things that they're trying to do and I know how much he wanted to become undisputed. But let that be a lesson to you. You know, I saw a lot of Jer I saw a lot of Jared Hurd in the interviews and stuff now. He's been getting the game a lot of popularity, moving all around Fairfax Stadium and stuff. He got a lot more parents to do as he kept collecting belts. But one thing I heard from him in all of these interviews, man, like, I just felt like, man, he was just doing the interviews with the wrong niggas, man. Like, and, you know, he got caught up in, you know, sometimes you get caught up in the glamour and glitz. I don't think Jared trained as hard as he possibly could have trained for the fight, even though he was in spectacular shape. He made weight. He came out there. One thing, yo, I'm not questioning Jared. Heard her, it's hard not in one bit, so don't mistake nothing I'm fucking saying. You know what I'm saying? He's my hometown guy. He's the guy that I put all my chips on any and every time. What I'm simply saying is, from the conversations I heard on Behind the Gloves, Let the First Sight, and everything like that, man, it just kind of sounded like he was already inking himself to win, and he was looking past the opponent and not looking at the opponent in front of him as Julian J-Rock kept his head down. You know, everybody slept on him since that, what was it, like the fifth or sixth round he took that uh, Charlo loss, something like that. Um, when Charlo knocked him on his ass. But everybody just didn't take that man serious. Like, you know, of course I'm going to rep for my guy, you know what I mean? But I don't have no problem with J-Rock, you know what I'm saying? Not at all, you know, like like I said. I came out last night right after the fight and admitted where I was wrong, said I'm sorry, and even gave my thumbnail with my head down like super blown that Jared Heard lost, you know what I'm saying? I only did like a minute video, but you could tell that I was absolutely blown, like pretty much like I was devastated. But at the same time, I gave that man his respect, and a real man always remits what he's wrong, and he always gets in front of that. Now, I even said that J Julian J. Rock Williams is a superior boxer. Everybody is a superior boxer when they get in there with the uh, with Jared Hurd, that just doesn't, you just can't keep enough gas in the tank to keep going. Jared Hurd is like the big baby of his division. The way he walks you down, keeps throwing big barrage to punches, and he never lets up. But the only thing is, he's he's with a clean drug program. <laughs> um, and it was just very awkward to see how much he transitioned his game and how big, how first of all, how strong J-Rock looked. How the fuck, how he didn't fade after the fifth, and how he just kept coming, unleashing his combinations, laying in wait. When he got on his bicycle in the later rounds, he didn't get on his bicycle because he was scared or he was tired. He got on his bicycle because he already knew that he had him outboxed. He had him with a knockdown. I believe the knockdown came in the first, where he was in between the ropes. He had the knockdown early. He was outboxing him. You know what I'm saying? Like I think, believe, like to me, like the third through the, the, the like there was three or four rounds. There's like two or three rounds where Jared Hurd just started picking up steam after the second. So I would say like the third through the sixth, he started picking up steam. But what Jared Hurd was doing that was blowing me was he kept turning the shoulder on the inside, and he figured eventually I'm gonna get an Ayers Landry Laura knockout. 
by turn, you know, turning, getting on the inside, applying the pressure, pushing my weight up on them, hitting them with the short, hard shots to the body and the short hooks upstairs. And eventually he'll deplete and he'll fall. But as the six came around, I was like, okay, this is our time. We about to pick up steam. We about to get rolling. It never got rolling. You know what I'm saying? Like J-Rock kept his energy. He didn't die down, not one bit. So I, I heard he got with an elitist trainer. He left his home. You know what I'm saying? It's hard for a guy like that, man. He's a fucking devout Muslim. You could tell after he won the belt, he got down on his fucking knees and screamed and cried, Alu Akbar. You know what I'm saying? like, And that just lets you know what type of stunning individual he is. Very class act. Things he said about Jared's her mother defines, you know what I'm saying, African-American household, you know what I'm saying, at, at his genuine fashion. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the core of our beliefs. You know what I'm saying? That family is everything that you are highly supportive. And even though he's never had a mother and he lost his father, he felt like Jared Heard's mom felt like his mom. You know what I mean? Due to the fact that, you know what I'm saying, the way he treated them, knowing he was going out to hurt her son. So he said a lot of endearing things, you know what I'm saying? And Jared Hurd kept his head high and he conducted himself like a champion. Now, the holes in Jared Hurd's game where Jared messed up, I believe that because Jamel Charlo beat J-Rock, and J-Rock was like a top dog at that time, then Tony Harrison comes and beats Jamel Charlo and... Jared Hurd floored Tony Harrison in the later rounds. I think he thought that he was just going to get him up out of there, man. And that nigga trained like a different animal. And one thing I will say, man, J-Rock, man, like after watching the J-Rock last night, that J-Rock can beat any fucking body. Like, real rap. The power in both of his fucking hands. Oh, my God. Like, the rotating the angles inside, like when he was on the inside. The way he kept Jared, Ro Jared Heard with pressure pushed up against the fucking ropes, and he couldn't get off. Did y'all see that? It was like the whole, like, sixth or seventh round. Jared could not keep J-Rock up off of him, so that new strength and conditioning coach you helped, that you had, that held you down, it definitely helped. Now, you should throw them niggas a bonus bag, man, but congrats to you for coming home with the three belts, man. Um, So now we got to wait for the smoke to clear between Tony Harrison and Charlo, and I think that Jared Hurt <clears throat> might continue to train for three months out, might take a tune-up with somebody with, like, footwork like his, and you know what I'm saying, like press press guys inside that like to press, you know what I'm saying, and figure out where he got wrong, where he pressed inside. Because I don't, I think Jared lost sight of the fact that when he was losing the inside, he st he was having real big success on the outside. But I think he was so gassed from him applying that pressure to him and him not being used to, and him and not being able to do that to other individuals. And I'm sorry, other individuals not being able to do that to Jared, I think that was shocking and it zapped him. Not only that, but when you take so much damage, that's shocking your energy. When you got a guy laying on his weight on you, that's shocking your energy. When you stand in the inside and trying to make it ugly, that zaps your energy. So at the end of the day, you know what I mean? The guy landing punches ain't losing as much energy, but the guy... And he didn't overextend himself. He picked the shots very well, man. And he just made an accurate go of it, man. But look, man, Swift, hold your head. Just know, man, I still got my burgundy and gold on. The DMV is all the way behind you. Uh, and you know what I mean? That's just one thing, man. Look, all the greatest lows, man. How many times Ali lost? How many times Mike Tyson lost? How many times, you know what I'm saying, Joe Lewis, Sonny Liston, Floyd Patterson, you know what I mean, like Arturo Gotti, Goddamn Jake LaMotta, all of these niggas, man, they lost, man. And they were still great champions. Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, all of them, man. So you that you can you can be that too. So I just think that once he gets to look it back everything on the tape, see what he did wrong, figure out what the hell was going on with that slap punch and shit. I know he had two cuts in his eyes and he really couldn't see for a couple rounds as well. But I'm not making no excuses. He didn't make no excuses for himself. I just don't like how niggas be clickbaiting to get extra views on a boxing match when boxing when the boxing scene ain't really that big. I don't like how niggas don't be true to their views and shit. Be making up fake narratives about my nigga talking about he got his fucking eye broken shit like that. You don't even fucking know because 
He didn't even have no, he ain't had no fucking x-ray when he was in a fucking ring. But I ain't calling nobody out because I actually like you. But that whole clickbait and shit is lame to me, bruh. Y'all niggas don't never see me clickbait on here. And I guess I might have took it more personal because it's my guy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to lay up off it, man. But saying a nigga got his eye socket broken, you not 100% even, you don't even know that. Like, man, cut the shit, man. You talking about niggas, like, come on, bruh. Like, that shit is lame as fuck. For some extra views so you can get an extra couple hundred. Man, niggas already got several thousand subscribers. I don't even know why the fuck they got to do that cornball ass shit. But hey, man, that's how some niggas like to get down. Me, I'm true to all my views. I don't be doing that corny ass fuck shit. But hey, man, if that's how y'all niggas like to make y'all bones, go ahead. Every time you check my title, please believe it is what I say it is. It ain't no clickbait. And I ain't going to put no injuries on niggas that ain't even fucking there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? My man took a beating, but he got the head for the fucking beating. And you know what I'm saying? Like I said, man, redemption is in the rematch clause, man. So get yourself together, man. Come back stronger, man. J-Rock, man, enjoy your win, man. Soak it in. I know you've been through a lot. 13 and homeless, man, in the home of Philly, north of death. Like, let's be serious, man. Philly, stand up. Y'all got a fucking other champion, man. I know Bernard Hopkins is proud right now, man. Facts. And as we always say at the end of this joint, it costs you nothing to pay a nigga no mind. Respect, though. Swifty, you'll be back because what J what J Rock did, these other niggas don't got the heart to do, but you got the heart to come back and do it.